On which of the Parthenon's 46 columns does the capital belong? For although the Parthenon may appear to be one giant building kit with interchangeable parts, it's not. The building celebrated as a symbol of beauty and perfect proportions hides an ancient secret. Kathy Paraski and Lena Lambrinu, architects on the restoration team, investigate. You think that all the blocks are square in this building, but in fact, if you check it with a set square, you can see that we don't have a, a right angle here. And when Paraski places her book on one end of the stylobate, the Parthenon's foundation, it can't be seen from the other end. This is because there is a curve in the middle of the lines and the stylobate, about six and three quarters centimeters high. Chorus and his team have investigated every angle on the Parthenon. And although the building looks straight, they've discovered there's barely a straight line on it. These curves are no accident. They start with the foundation, or stylobate. Each of the 46 columns has a gently curving profile and leans inward. Even the architraves, marble beams that span the columns, as well as the architectural elements above them, are curved. This means that each of the over 70,000 pieces of the Parthenon is unique and fits in only one place. In all her time on the Parthenon restoration team, she's still amazed at one particular achievement of the ancients, their precision. We have a joint on the step of the Parthenon, which has been so thin, it's like 1 20th of a, of a millimeter, thinner than a hair. Further up, you cannot detect the joint at all. And finally, probably due to an earthquake, a crack starts from one block and continues to the other, and the two behave as one. This is the level of precision that the restorers need to match today. Their reconstructed column drum number 14192 was taken down because its base didn't fit. To achieve the required precision, they use metal smoothing plates, a technique based on ancient stone plates found on the Acropolis. It's a very traditional way to level uh, a, a marble surface. Uh, we're putting sand in these holes and they just uh, move it on the top of the stone. They can make very small differences between the surfaces. Manolis Chorus believes the ancient stone sanding plates could grind to one twentieth of a millimeter. But to stack and precisely align the drums presents an additional challenge. Again, the modern restorers uncover an ancient technique when they separate these two column drums for the first time in 2,500 years. The ancients align the drums very simply, but again ingeniously. They had this block of wood that they cut in half. The lower part was inserted at the center of the lower drum, flush and full scale. They would have had to set their compass at an impossible radius of nearly a mile. How they constructed the curved columns was one of the last great riddles left by the ancient Greek temple builders. The answer literally came to light at Didyma, 200 miles from Athens in what is today Turkey. Here, a team of German archaeologists was exploring the ruin of the Temple of Apollo.
Built at the time of Alexander the Great, 150 years after the Parthenon, it was the biggest Greek temple ever conceived. 120 columns, each one more than twice the height of the Parthenons. The German team noted an optical refinement, a curvature on the base of the temple, similar to that of the Parthenon. They suspected there might be more. Traversing the tunnel to the temple's sacred inner sanctum, open to the air, Lothar Hasselberger waited for his eyes to adjust. Coming out of the darkness of the tunnel into that wide marble hall is a blinding experience. What then, to my surprise, came up were regularly incised horizontal lines. And I found them interesting enough to at least keep them in mind in order to return at a, at a time when everything was under better light conditions. So I was left wondering. At the mercy of the sun, Hasselberger would have to wait for just the right time of day for the light to reveal more of the mysterious lines. There is a golden time each day when the sunlight comes just about parallel to the surface. It was worth the wait. Coming back, again under better light conditions, it was a kind of revelation because I realized this is a full-sized vertical section of a column the very one at the front of the temple. At just the right place in the temple of the sun god Apollo, at just the right time of day, he discovered what might be the answer to the riddle. An almost invisible, scaled-down version of the subtle entesis curve of the columns. This template represents a squashed column because it is impossible to draw the curve of the column in full size, the Greeks scaled down the height of the column by a factor of 16. Now, they had a curve that could be drawn with a large compass-like instrument. But the genius behind the template is that the width was not scaled down. So each horizontal line is still the radius of a full-scale column. Now, all a stonemason need do is set his compass to any line of the template to get the diameter of any corresponding point on the column. This simple scale drawing was a key reference for the stonemasons at Didyma as they carved one column drum after another. Greek stonemasons were so experienced in creating optical refinements like entesis that they may have been given relatively little guidance. The inscribed template survived at Didyma because the temple was destroyed by an earthquake and remained unfinished. But at the Parthenon, such lines probably disappeared when the walls were polished at the time of completion. The Parthenon was finished the marble surface is smooth and polished, and with it went what we uh, assume uh, were the construction lines of that temple. The modern restorers believe the ancient builders must have had some similar kind of template to produce the subtle curvature on not only the columns, but most of the Parthenon's marble blocks. The key problems are these amazing refinements, the curvature, the inclination, and so on. But once you've got them established, once you know with these blueprints exactly where you're going, then you can proceed down the length of the building and across the front by repetition. So once they get going, they can get going at considerable speed. With the discovery of the Didyma plans, the restorers have new insight into the last great secret of how the ancients built the Parthenon. <laughs> 